Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come at last. Welcome to the final episode of Advanced Wars Story. We've got two more maps left to play, and they've actually both been overhauled significantly from their previous incarnations, which I thought were respectively too easy and way too difficult. So, we'll see if the overhaul was worth it. Here we go, we've got a black flag for the second to last mission of the game. Uh, something up with the enemy CO portrait. I wonder what happened. Well, let's check it out. So apparently Black Hole still has units left somehow. Well, not Black Hole, Sonia and Lash, which are basically Black Hole at this point. And Andy's a little too enthusiastic for this final battle against Sonia, presumably. But luckily, Andy's not alone this time around. Uh, much like the final mission of Advance Wars 1, he has friends. Uh, probably not the friends you wanted. It's Olaf and, as you'll see in a moment, Eagle. So with Olaf here, it looks like things are going to get a little snowy, and that's going to make things difficult. Yep, Eagle, as usual, will swoop in at the very final moment. It's a shame you two didn't get to fight each other. Wow, that is so you. Well, Gnell, who do you think? Who's been, uh... at the crux of the issue for the entire time? Oh, the mission name kinda goes... Well, maybe a pixel or two off the screen. I think it's barely still within the boundaries of the screen. Oh dear, what has happened to you, Sonia? Uh, you're looking a little green, more so than usual. Uh, you got a little blue in your yellow, maybe? Yeah, this seems really reckless and dangerous. I can't see your army because the camera's not focused on it. Oh boy, oh boy. I guess we got no choice but to fight it out. Luckily, we've got a pretty sizable force, it seems. Yeah, Sonya, you really shouldn't have been scared of Andy. He's kind of... Well, he's Andy. Or is he? No, I, I mean, of course he's Andy, but <laughs> what I mean is... Maybe we give him less credit than we should. Prepare to become space dust! <laughs> Bringing out the Mega Man X quotes. Oh, you guys can handle this, come on. So, the mission here is to take the HQ within 10 days, and, you know, I gotta say that's a bit of a tall order, but I think we can handle it. So, we're gonna take that HQ in 10 days. Let's do it. Let's get started. So, Olaf's got the Navy Force, Eagle's got the air units, duh. And Andy, well, uh, much like Advanced Wars 1, his forces are not that big, but we'll use them to the best of our ability. So with our units, we just have to roll forward. This is a very interesting mission because uh, you only have pre-deployed units, but the enemy does not. I think the enemy starts with the unit cap hit already. Actually, I can check that out myself. Uh, status. Okay, so she's one away from the unit cap. Why didn't you just put down that 50th unit, Platinum Skink? <laughs> yeah, you might as well, right? Alright, so we're going to need to pull out all the stops and... Uh, the ability for C units to cross the bridge is, is going to be really, really helpful here. 
but I think Andy's going to be the one to capture the HQ. Uh, besides Sammy, Andy is really good at capturing things, because his powers can repair the capturing units if they get hit. So with Olaf, he's got some units on the bottom part of the screen here. So what does he have to face over here? Well, uh, basically everybody has to face quite a lot. So I think what I did in my test run is that over here we've only really got... There's no battleship on this part of the map, actually. So besides the Dreadnought, not really much to worry about. So I'm going to focus the Navy units on the bottom part of the map. Let's go ahead and dive, and um, battleship can hang around here. Basically, I'm going to make these units a kind of blockade, because you can block ground units that way. It's really weird. I mean, I don't know where the boat is actually positioned. Maybe it's, like, under the boat, I think? Something like that? Well, n under the boat. Maybe it's, like, under the bridge. Something like that. And I'm just going to move everyone forward. I'm going to see if, um, like, after the enemy makes their first move... I'm going to adjust my positioning a little. And the APC... Mm, yeah, I better keep the APC down here, because fuel is actually... It might be... Well, not fuel. Fuel is going to be fine. I think ammo is going to be a problem. Because we only have pre-deployed units. We can't build anything else. Not unless we capture something. You can capture stuff. That's That's not impossible. Of course, Eagle with his APC is definitely headed for the bottom part of the map. I'm I'm basically going to ignore this top part of the map. You don't really need to, like, have a bunch of forces push through here or anything. So... After I move these units, there's a couple more air units as well. Lucky I got an interceptor. That's going to be helpful. Oh, and there's more down here, too. So let's see what Sonia decides to do. Oh yeah, and I guess I should have a look at her dossier because Sonia is now the boss CEO. She's known as Supreme Sonia now. And uh, she's quite a monster. So she has lower unit costs and she has constant counter break on at all times. Hides units HP, always strikes first, always sees your hidden units. Although the last two maps don't have any fog of war, so there's no point to that. And she has 20% bad luck, so that, that'll help you just a little bit, but constant counterbreak is still very difficult to deal with. You have to be very careful about what engagements you take. And her regular power basically gives her all of Lash's powers. Double terrain stars, 10% extra power per star, and she can even build in cities. So Hachi, Lash, and Sonya all rolled into one. Is this crazy enough for you? Uh, look at this. The superpower takes away all of the abilities that I just mentioned. However, the counter-attack damage boost is so big that you basically instantly get KO'd by any sort of counter-attacks, even a single little infantry. It is nuts, and I kind of like it. Really forces you to think about how you, um, how you approach this. And with only five stars, still, that's not a lot of energy she has to get before she fires up the powers. So yeah, you can approach this in a lot of different ways. So the enemy is moving forward. This this is probably going to take a while just because I have to move a bunch of um, I have to move a bunch of units again. I've been saying that these three versus one matches are really kind of time consuming because you have a huge enemy army and three armies that you have to manage yourself so that can take a while but when it's pre-deployed I think that's actually okay or at least not as bad because because um you know there's not as many units you have to worry about all right so that's turn one out of the way eventually yeah, it takes the enemy a while to end turn there for some reason. Alright. Time to move forward, and... Can't really... I can't really attack anything, in case it wasn't obvious. So the best thing to do is to position my units in such a way that maybe Sonya will just run right into them. I guess... 
uh, there's probably no reason to have your anti-airs off to the sides. Actually, I guess I could I could I could position them like right here. This is probably okay. And it's a good thing you can move through your allies' units, otherwise this might be just a little bit difficult. Alright, Olaf's turn now. Let's start by getting rid of the... I can I can get rid of the Neo Tank, can't I? If I go in this position, I'm leaving myself vulnerable to all those units, but I might as well just go... Uh, I might as well just go crazy with it. Let's see here, I can hit... I'd love to hit the cruiser and maybe hit the interceptor on this turn, but I guess I can't really do that. Um, yeah, if my sub tries to hit anything, it's probably just going to get run over by the cruiser, so what I'm going to do is have the Dreadnought go over here. Because there's no, there's a bomber in the area, but there's no way it's going to get close enough to me. Let's position ourselves like... Like this, I think, is fine. That should be probably okay. And I can use the artillery to potentially hit one of the navy units if they get within range. As for all the units up here, I guess the sub is coming down here for additional support, and... Uh, let's, let's keep the units as they are here. This should be alright. They can be a they can be a suitable blockade for Andy. Right, definitely got to be careful with the fighters in the area, and all the other units too. I can hide behind the massive blockade of navy units though. That'll be nice. Wouldn't it be funny if like you could load your uh, Eagle's B copter into Olaf's cruiser? Yeah, actually that probably wouldn't be funny. That'd be very inconvenient. So let's see what the enemy decides to do with this. And I'll keep the air units in their relatively safe um, cage, I guess you could say. Alright, that'll do it for now. I'll keep the anti-air up here for the same reason as the orange anti-airs being there. Or the red ones, I guess. Oh, I guess the battleship is going down, but the fighter moved first, so that's fine. I think we can already see that the bad luck is actually working out in my favor. Not for that guy, though. You definitely don't want to lose all your infantry, otherwise you'll wind up uh, capturing... Well, you'll, you'll have nothing to capture the HQ with. Okay, this is working out pretty well, actually. I don't think Andy has any air units to hit with his missile, though. I guess the enemy was smart to avoid that. And the sub just rises, because it had nothing to shoot at, so it has to either dive or rise. That's how sub AI works. It's really bad. Look at this mass of units. It's amazing. And Sonia just sits on her turn again. I guess I didn't notice that when I was practicing, because I was, um, using Emulator Turbo. Alright. How do we deal with this? Unfortunately, Olaf's not exactly, um, helping out that much, because now uh, Andy is blocked from doing anything. But I want to get rid of the anti-airs first and foremost, so we're gonna focus down those. And I can't hit any of the air units up here quite yet, so hold these guys back. That Neo Tank will probably be annoying. I guess I'll send a Medium Tank back in order to help out with that. Yeah, this should be alright. Alright, Olaf, you're probably going to have to get out of the way now, but you can see that my plan basically worked. And worked very well at that. So I can shoot at this. And yeah, I'm going for the ground units first. Now, what do we do with these guys? That's the question. I guess with the battleship taking a hit, I guess I have to pull it back. And that allows the cruiser to come in and 
Not gonna be able to one-shot these, unfortunately. But... Yeah, I guess I'll try and clear a path to one of the... Because the, the Dreadnought can easily one-shot this thing. And then, maybe the sub has a shot here? No, okay. Well, let's get rid of the cruisers first. And yes, I will take a shot at the bomber, that's a pretty... Oh, I completely forgot, I'm dumb. You, you see what I mean? Because she has constant counter break, I completely forgot about that. Oh well, I'm gonna make the best of it. What I'm gonna do is... If I... If I hit the correct unit here, then I should be able to... Oh, I can do that. And now I have... Winter Fury! So that's gonna be two damage to all of her units. And I know this activates snow, which is gonna hinder Eagle somewhat, but I, I don't I don't think Eagle is quite yet ready to basically go crazy on the enemy units. And if he is ready, like I'll I'll uh, answer that question on the next turn. If he is ready, then what I can do is um, basically I can have all of these units strike enemies that are near him. Because there are definitely some enemies nearby that I can hit safely, because this restricts Sonia's movement, too. And I guess I'll just pull back to the city and get repairs. Alright, then. Alright, let's see what Eagle can do. I know this anti-air was damaged, so... I need to get rid of the air units first, and with constant counter break, that's easier said than done. Uh, this should do it, though. Yeah, there we go. And this anti-air is gone, so that's safe. And these air units can still block the vulnerable units from being hit. Always a fun tactic. And I know this anti-air was damaged, so go ahead and blow you up. Go here and drop. Go here and drop too. So yeah, learning to deal with um, de learning to deal with snow as Eagle is probably going to be important. Now, remember what this does, it takes off counter break and adds an insane amount of counter attack damage. So you just don't want to get counterattack during counter calamity, as it's called. So focus on indirect attacks, and the hidden HP actually comes off too, so that's helpful. Uh, she did not decide to attack the fighter for some reason. Yeah, I kind of have an idea of why stuff like that can happen, because the AI wants to do a certain amount of damage without taking too much counterattack damage, and it simulates a luck roll. It doesn't see what, it doesn't know in advance what its own luck roll is going to be but it simulates a luck roll, and if the simulation doesn't turn out well, the AI is not going to take the risk. That's how that works. Please don't sit there for like five minutes. Okay. I I think if I think if she lags whenever she ends her turn, I think I'm going to have to just like um, actually use speed up in this, these videos, which I've been avoiding for arbitrary reasons. Really? Can I hit any air units? No. Enemy is doing a good job at staying out of anti-air range. Getting kind of annoying. Alright, so rocket... Um, you know, just ignore those C units. They're not going to get through all of these units and get down into the bottom part of the map. Uh, but as mentioned, I want to avoid making any attacks with where I could take counter-attack damage, so... I think I'm just going to play it safe for the time being. Because when she's in, in superpower state, uh, trust me, you don't want to make any moves unless you know that you're going to get a KO. Aside from indirects, of course. Alright, so the snow is now gone. And let's do... Oh, I want to get rid of the Neo Tank, I think. Yeah, I have a bunch of units aiming at it, and I've accidentally shot the Dreadnought, but that's fine. So, um, 
Let's get rid of the cruiser. Can I? Yeah, I can get this in one hit. So I'll go for it. And I'll go for that too. And. Uh, you, uh, dreadnoughts, no, destroyers cannot counterattack subs, so this is safe. There we go. And I can do that safely too. This destroyer will, um... Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the medium tank. That's probably a good idea. And I'm gonna... Is this a one-shot? No. I'm gonna give you a demonstration of how seriously powerful the counterattack damage is. So this is gonna leave the unit with 2 HP. It still managed to destroy the, the uh, destroyer in one shot with a counterattack. That's how crazy it is. Yeah, I wasn't really using that destroyer, that's why I got rid of it. Okay, Eagle's turn now. Luckily, he can make a bunch of moves without risking counterattack damage himself. So, the Bomber can get rid of this, I think. Yeah, Eagle's still got an amazing amount of power with his air units. Most of the anti-airs are basically gone, so this is safe. So, Copter can deal with that. I want to get rid of this bomber, which I can do. And, um... Yeah, I wish I could hit the bomber from here, but that's not happening. Uh, is this a one-shot? Should be. Yeah, perfect. I should be asking if it's a kill or not. Alright, part of me wants to actually occupy the airport and destroy the medium tank straight away, but I don't think I can do that. Because there, there's like two fighters there. I can... Maybe... Nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna play it that way. This is how it's gonna go down. Oh, this anti-air can actually reach the interceptor though, so I will take advantage of that. Uh, you go over here and do that. Uh, get rid of the sub, maybe? Yeah, I'll, I'll have to have this bomber hide over here. You get rid of the sub. Perfect. And if Eagle can get a lightning strike on the next turn, that would be really helpful. So she's not able to build a lot of units because she started basically at the unit cap already. So uh, she basically can only build something when you take away one of her units. And occupying that airport is actually good for me. It's stuck in repair mode and it cannot um, move off, so she'll be spending money. But she's already built up so much money that draining her funds basically doesn't matter. So, not really a lot to say at this point. Yeah, this is definitely one of the long-duration missions, I would say. Alright, now I can get rid of that, I think. As soon as I hit it enough times, I can do some damage there. And unfortunately, a, a bunch of um, places... Uh, this this area is getting really crowded. So, I could do this. And that's it for this turn, I think, unfortunately. Now, as for Olaf, he should have some things he can do. Maybe that? Yeah, that's a... that's perfect. Sub starting to run out of fuel, so I gotta keep that in mind. And now the Dreadnought can actually... Wow! 4 HP Dreadnought and it's doing 78 to a rocket? Okay, that rocket was probably, like, way damaged already, but still. That was surprising. Over here... Oh, I'm in rocket range, but that's fine with me. Gets rid of the unit. 
And now I can fire up another Winter Fury, but the question is, do I want to? Uh, yeah, I probably do. So this will do two more damage. It's... This is actually a very valuable power. I would always use it here, even considering the snow effect, because this reduces the... Th this does a lot of damage for the amount of stars it, um, it costs. Alright, so Eagle should be able to get a lightning strike, but I probably won't use it on a snow turn. But we'll see. Let's have you... Can I can I get this fighter out of the way right now? No, definitely not. That, that thing had way too much health. I should have checked. Oh, it's unfortunate that I can't really hit it with anything interesting. Because the, the, the Interceptor can't make it. I can destroy this. And I can do this. To yeah, it's time to start bombing the units over here and get rid of this bomber before it can do anything. Let's see, still not sure if I should use the power quite yet. Let's have you guys move forward. Yeah, I think I'm gonna wait until a non-snow turn. So this T-Copter is gonna sit here for the time being. Oh yeah, and we're gonna have to wait a while for all of our units to finish healing. Alright, let's see what she's got. This is probably going to be a painful turn. Oh, I can actually see her HP now, so that's a good thing, too. Finally, you got rid of Missile Chan. It took you longer than I did to make that Missile Chan video. Of course, Andy's units have now taken a significant amount of damage. I hope I can get that healing power up soon because I'm about to capture those properties, and my money has been building up very much, because I'm not building anything, and I have all those properties at the start. So if I could capture, like, an airport or something, then I would be able to, like, crank out huge amounts of enemy units. Uh, you get into APC, I need you to move, like, right now. Blow that up, and that too. I don't think I want to risk that. I'm going to have the medium tank come back and do that. Because you saw what happened to that other unit. The counterattack damage was not insignificant. Alright, Olaf's turn now. Can I finish off this Neo tank? Probably? <laughs> Not likely. Right. I need to get these guys... These guys need to help deal with the rest of the C units. I'm gonna join them just because they're low on fuel. I lost the APC, so there's literally no way for me to refuel. Because you can't use your allies' um, properties to refuel in... in GBA Advance Wars. Which one, which one? Uh, better weaken this thing, I think. Alright, Eagle, it's time to let him have it. We're getting a lightning strike this turn. Can I do 60 of this? Yes, I can. I should probably try to finish the map with Eagle himself. That was a stupid move. I completely forgot, but no matter now. 
So now I'm going to use the Lightning Strike to try and get the infantry over here so I can start capturing. Of course, depending on what enemy units are in my way, that might prove difficult. But we'll see. Because remember, if you load an infantry into the transporter, those are able to move a second time when you Lightning Strike, but they can't if they are unloaded. So always bear that in mind. And even though Counter Calamity is still on, I think this is really an alright move to make. So should I move up here and start clearing a path? I think I'm gonna do this. I should be able to force her to build uh, nothing but infantry for a little while by doing it this way. And with this unit... Uh, I can't really hit anything without getting blown up, so I'll move it here. It's gonna be a blockade of sorts. Jess will not make fun of you if you lose this one. Well, she might. Alright, let's get this unit all as close as possible. I can't really get it to the HQ yet. Should I do this? Um, I think this is fine. There's really nothing in range right now. And this is out of the missile range, right? Yeah, I, I should have checked beforehand, but... It, it's still out of range, so I'm safe. And this will come over here. I didn't. I didn't actually read the number. I should really. I should really have read the number before I did that. Okay, you get up here. Oh, I forgot there was a sub there. My mistake. But at this point, it's... The, the fighter should really be there. That's in missile range. Well, there's nothing I can do about it, actually. It was going to be in missile range one way or the other. Get you over here. I don't really need to destroy the units down here. I've pretty much got a, a guaranteed 100 power at this point anyways. Alright, Sonya, be kind to those infantry. Who knows what'll happen if you actually, like, blow them up. I might get mad. Ouch. Dreadnoughts hurt. Oh, there's a recon there, too. Alright, so this might be more trouble than I thought it was going to be. And it's unfortunate to lose that APC with the infantry still in it, but I'm totally alright. They're ignoring the infantry for now. This is good. And it went for the transport copter for some reason. This is also good. There's nothing guarding their HQ right now, and as long as they don't build something dumb nearby, I, I'm basically safe. I'm actually not sure if losing one of the COs causes you to lose the entire match. So I really need this right now. It's only going to repair one single unit, but I really, really need this. So you get over here, blow that thing up. Or try to, anyways. There we go. And Olaf, I, I think Olaf's days are basically done in this map. Although, I've... Oh dear, I really do need to, like, actually get these units out of danger. Because I, I don't really think this is one of those situations where losing one CO costs you the whole thing. But I could be wrong. So this Dreadnought should be relatively safe in this area. Because Dreadnoughts are big units, but there is a bomber there. Okay, I need to get I need to get the recon out of the way for sure. So I'll do that. And there's a there's a missile there too, but I, I really need to get rid of the recon. I'm sure you guys understand. And I should really get rid of this thing, too. But I can't, because constant counterbreak is pretty annoying. You see how that works? I can deal with that, at least. 
If she stays away from the HQ, then I am perfectly safe. Oh, she's actually capturing now. That's concerning. Alright, this is looking good. This has already been a very long semi-final mission. Maybe I'll make the final mission a separate video. I'll have to decide that later. Uh, I can one-shot this, right? Okay, but even with all that counter-attack damage boost, that did not do a whole lot, so I'm, I'm a bit lucky in that regard. Wait, can I do something here? <laughs> nope, but... Uh, the sub was, like, out of fuel anyways. Whatever. Okay, get you out of there. Get into the rocket blind spot, Olaf. Thank you very much. I think I win this at this point. Yeah, there's probably nothing she can do now. Get over here. Might as well blow that up for fun. And I've actually gotten in, like, I've had, I've finished with two days left, so that's a nice time limit. Like, the last time I only had one day left, and Andy had to be the one to capture. And yes, I am perfectly aware that this is a survival map, not an HQ capture map, but I, uh... I decided to play it like it wasn't a survival map anyways. My technique score is gonna be so awful. Right, Andy cannot do anything, I think. And neither can you. 58 from a 3 HP Dreadnought. See, that unit really is just that powerful. Alright, let's finish this. I've taken way too much time on this as it is. Uh, sorry, Kanbei, I kind of beat the map before you got here. I feel like that should trigger a secret alternate ending where the war just ends right away, but there's still one map left to go. Oh, and this is their first time seeing the new Sonya, basically. Yeah, but they still have huge amounts of numbers. Yeah, we definitely need to take out Lash and her, uh, spaceship as soon as possible. But we're gonna face a lot of resistance. Next up is the final mission of the game, and it too has been overhauled from what it was originally. I actually gave up on the original version of the final map because I thought it was completely impossible. Someone did manage to finish it, but still, I still think it needed the overhaul, so we'll see what that's all about in the final map of Advanced Wars Story, and uh, I'll be right back to deal with that after a short break. <laughs> 